orbiting around magnetic field in the vicinity of Sagittarius A star. The process is called synchrotron emission. And basically, as electrons are gyrating around the magnetic field, they emit radiation because of their acceleration, synchrotron radiation. And the frequency of the radiation depends on their uh, Lorentz factor and the strength of the magnetic field. The theory for synchrotron emission was developed uh, last, you know, 100 years ago. But um, the details of how the magnetic field is organized and what's responsible for producing these relativistic electrons is still uh, unsettled. Uh, for example, these relativistic electrons could be a result of a re reconnection of magnetic fields, like we see in flares uh, on the surface of the sun. Uh, whenever you get two field lines um, that are crossing each other, they can reconnect and release energy, magnetic energy, in the f by accelerating particles to near the speed of light. That's one possible source. Another one is uh, that w um, electrons can ride on uh, plasma waves propagating and get accelerated to high speeds. The bottom line is, uh, or you can have also shocks that are accelerating uh, by the Fermi mechanism, a mechanism that Enrico Fermi envisioned um, 50 years ago, uh, based on the idea that uh, when you have a shock wave, you have convergence of flows. Um, if you go to the shock rest frame, you can see matter approaching you from both directions. And so when a particle bounces back and forth fr uh, due to reflection by magnetic field inhomogeneities, uh, it's as if uh, you have a tennis ball uh, reflected from two approaching rackets. So when a tennis ball uh, is reflected by, uh, by two approaching rackets, it gains uh, momentum every time it bounces. And so particles can just gain momentum, a small fraction of the particles, have a probability of gaining momentum. And so you can calculate what will be the end result of such a process. And you find that you end up with a power law distribution of relativistic particles. And so the existence of shocks around Sagittarius A star due to uh, turbulence could also accelerate electrons to high speeds. And uh, the, the bottom line is we see um, the spectrum of emission from Sagittarius A star and we can Describe it by um, a population, a power law population of electrons, uh, together with uh, some strength for the magnetic field. And more, the polarization. the polarization gives us additional constraints on the geometry of the magnetic field. Because if you have magnetic field that is uh, coherent, then the, you end up with a very strong polarization. When you let a beam of electrons orbit around it, you can get a very high level of polarization depending on the power law index of their energy distribution. Uh, however, we don't know that the field is oriented in this way. We can image the polarization pattern on the sky around Sagittarius A star and from that infer the large scale geometry of the magnetic field. Uh, in terms of expectations, we expect because of the circular orbit of the material that is emitting the radiation, um, we would expect uh, some feed lines to be coherent on the scale uh, you know, of the orbit, the orbital radius. But there should also be a component due to turbulence uh, that uh, adds sort of a random orientation on small scales. And we, uh, I mean, the Event Horizon Telescope hopefully will shed more light on exact, the exact geometry and compare it to simulations. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, just yeah. for the tight collimation of the jet. Um, right, so um, there are various uh, ideas that were proposed 30 years ago for how to produce jets. And nowadays they can be tested uh, through numerical simulations, MHD simulations with magnetic fields. Um, the general um, feature when, when you see these jets produced in numerical simulation is that you need um, an accretion disk around the black hole. The black hole has to have spin, uh, usually. And then uh, the magnetic field lines in the, in the disk get wrapped around the black hole uh, as close to the innermost stable circular orbit. And then uh, some of the material is uh, going along field lines that form a helical uh, structure. Uh, 
like a tower rising above the black hole. And you see that in simulations. Uh, and the energy for the jet uh, could come from two sources, either from the spin of the black hole. And this is a mechanism uh, proposed by Blanford and Znayek, and it's called the blanford znayek mechanism, where you basically spin down the black hole and give the energy to, to the jet. Uh, another source of energy is the disk itself, uh, because the disk has material orbiting around the black hole, and you can tap this rotational energy from the material to the outflow. And there has been a debate in the literature as to what is the ultimate source of energy. Uh, it looks like uh, for uh, rapidly spinning black holes, the spin of the black hole can do the job uh, quite nicely, and you end up with beautiful jets produced on the computer that resemble the ones we see in nature.